It's time to get this party started, and I am so excited to talk about today's biography. You and me both. And how can you not be excited to talk about someone known for empowering others, who was given the title of the High Priestess of Soul by her fans? With her unique blend of jazz, blues, and folk music, we are talking about the life of Nina Simone. That's right. Now, taking a look back at her life, Eunice Kathleen Wayman, also known as Nina Simone, was born on February 21st, 1933 in Tryon, North Carolina. Yeah, her story was influenced by music at an early age. That is where Nina Simone began to play the piano at the age of three years old. Yes, as she continued to develop her musical gifts, Nina Simone dreamed of being recognized as the first major African-American concert pianist. I love it. There is nothing wrong with dreaming big. That's right, little bro. Nina Simone would later go on to attend New York City's famed Juilliard School of Music, where she would continue her training. When checking out her biography, I saw that she actually taught piano and worked with other performers there at Juilliard. That was the part that really stunk about her biography, though, was when she ended up having to leave Juilliard because she didn't have enough money to continue her schooling. Yeah, Nina would end up moving to Philadelphia with her family to save money. An interesting part about her story is that Nina also said that she experienced racism when trying to attend the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia. Although she knew she was talented, she felt that the school rejected her, not based on her gifts, but based on the fact that she was black. The beautiful part of her story is their discrimination didn't stop Nina. As the old saying goes, when one door closes, another window opens. Nina began playing jazz and blues in Atlantic City. That is where her stage name was born too. The name Nina came from the Spanish word niña, and the name Simone was inspired by a French actress. Nina was so loved there that she even caught the attention of other famous African-American writers like Langston Hughes and James Baldwin. I mean, just looking at her musical catalog, Nina Simone has made some inspiring music over decades, including albums like Amazing Nina Simone, Nina Simone Sings, Ellington, Wild is the Wind, and Silk and soul. And you can't forget how Nina did her thing with the Bob Dylan song, The Times They Are a Changing, and the Beatles, Here Comes the Sun. Some of my favorite Nina Simone records are also tracks like Take Care of Business, I Put a Spell on You, and I Want a Little Sugar in My Bowl. Now you can't even talk about the career of Nina Simone without mentioning her songs, Young, Gifted, and Black, and another inspirational song called for women as well. But although Nina Simone is well known for her music, you can't forget about her involvement in the civil rights movement. Right, like in 1963, Nina Simone is known for one of her musical responses about Mississippi with the assassination of civil rights leader Medgar Evers and the Birmingham church bombing that killed four young black girls. Yes. And any time you look at art, it always reflects life. During the 60s, after the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, a neighbor of Simone's would also be assassinated. Malcolm X and Betty Shabazz were neighbors of Simone, and Malcolm's assassination was another tragedy in the black community, causing civil unrest. That is when things became even worse when civil rights leader Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Right, and in her response to the tragedy, Nina Simone, along with her bassist Greg Taylor, wrote the song, Why the King of Love is Dead, where Nina performed their song at the Westbury Music Festival. Nina Simone will go on to take her talents around the world, living in several different countries. After taking a brief period off from the music scene, Nina Simone's career would have a renaissance in the 80s with her song, My Baby Just Cares For Me, 
where it was used in a Chanel No. 5 perfume commercial, becoming a top 10 hit in Britain. Another interesting fact, though, Big Sis, about the career of Nina Simone was that she was also an author. Nina Simone wrote her autobiography called I Put a Spell on You, which was published in 1991. I mean, just looking back at her career, Nina Simone lived an amazing life. The sad part about her life, though, is her passing. After battling breast cancer, the life of Nina Simone came to an end on April 21st, 2003, when she died at the age of 70. Hands down, Nina Simone's legacy is out of this world. And although she is gone, she will never be forgotten for her willingness to stand up for the rights of others and a voice that soothed the soul and challenged people to make a change.